Now, Heartland Sports with Todd Richards. Hi again, everyone. A women's college basketball rivalry on the first night of the regular season, and boy, is it a good one. Simo at SIU, we head out to Banterra Center for the highlights and really a really competitive first half. And for much of the game, Jaden Mason hits a three for the Salukis, and their home fans appreciate that. But Megan Barton comes right back. She played her high school basketball in Carterville, just what, a few miles away. She was hitting shots for Coach Rika Patterson's team, not just that time, but this time. Takes it right to the basket and scores that one. Meanwhile, Mason back at it again. She steps back and she hits her shot. She had 13 points to help lead the Salukis. Meanwhile, the leader overall in points right here, talking about Alicia Doyle for the Red Hawks, a Heron native who played at Carterville. She had 19 points, but not enough. SIU too strong down the stretch. They win 85 to 70 over the Red Hawks. So the women win tonight. The SIU men opened up with a win last night at Banterra Center, beating Kentucky State 88-57. Xavier Johnson led the Saluki, scoring 20, also making some dazzling passes throughout the night. I just like the, the fact that everybody had fun. Uh, we played hard and we were able to win. Um, you know, it's hard to win in college basketball, like Trevor was saying, um, but the fact that we came out here and we were able to win um, just means a lot. Yeah, I thought he came out, especially the first half, and played great. I thought he was pretty decisive. I mean, he, he's put a ton of work in. You know, he should have complete confidence out there. And, you know, we need him, you know, to be a guy who can make decisions for us uh, and play with complete confidence. Any given night, somebody can go off on this team. Uh, it's a product of how much work we've put in over the last five months. Um, there's a lot of people who can score in a lot of different ways, and the ball really moves um, with this team. Hoops are definitely here. The Salukis host Queens Friday at 7. The Red Hawks play at Butler Friday night at 7.30. First-year Jackson football coach Ryan Nesbitt took over a huge challenge this season. He never flinched, and his team hasn't either. After an opening game loss, the Indians have rattled off nine straight wins as they prepare to play at unbeaten Sekman Friday night for the Class 6 District 1 title. About the only question mark with Jackson this week is the quarterback position. No word yet whether starter Adrian Fox will be able to go after injuring his foot against Lindbergh, but the Indians have full faith in sophomore backup signal caller Drew Parsons. Drew's an incredibly talented kid, and that's that's you know we're blessed and fortunate uh, to to not just have a, a, a backup that's serviceable. Uh, we've got another really good football player waiting. I have a lot of confidence in him. I think he does a great job. He's worked hard. He's put in a lot of extra time that people don't see, and I think he'll do great. Drew, as a person, just everyone rallies around him. Uh, you saw it last Friday. Everyone kind of rallied around him, and we we got the job done. So. I know everyone on this team has the, the most faith that they could possibly have in them. All right, should be a fun game for the Indians this Friday. Certainly a test as we check out the district matchups. And they're in that Class 6 District 1 championship at Sacrament again Friday. In Class 5 District 1, Cape Central hosts Farmington. Scott City and Valley Catholic, a flat-out classic on Heartland Football Friday in Class 2 for the district title. And then a couple of uh, semifinals in uh, Class 1, uh, Thayer and Portageville uh, going head-to-head. -head, and also Van Farr at St. Vincent. So we are in the season right now where games are going to decide who's going to end up winning a state title a little ways down the road.